Now with the custom event in place, we got the core features of Angular covered. Now Angular is a huge framework with a lot of features and I'll not cover them all in this refresher, which is, well, just that, a refresher. But there are two other major features I wanna cover. Right now, we have two components on the same page here, person input and persons. And this kind of makes sense for our very simple application here. But you could also have a setup where you want to have them on different pages. And technically you still only have one page, that index.html file, but you wanna give the user of your app the illusion of having multiple pages. Now you can do this with a feature Angular offers, which is called routing. This essentially allows Angular to read the URL of your browser and render different components based on that URL to again, kind of replicate that feeling of having different parts in your app. To set up routing, you typically add a new module, which is normally named app-routing.module.ts. That's the file name. And there we export our app routing module. As all Angular modules, you need to add ng-module, this decorator here, and the ng-module needs to be imported from at Angular core, like that. Now in this module, I wanna set up routing. I wanna set up the routes my Angular app knows. So the URLs it understands and for which it knows which component to render. I'll define these routes here in a new constant and the type of that constant will be the routes type, which again is a type in this case, which we can import from an Angular package. Here, that is the at Angular router package. Now routes is an array, an array of JavaScript object where every object is the definition of a route the Angular router is then able to parse and handle. Now a route definition in its simplest form has a path, which is the path, so the part after your domain, you wanna load a certain page for. And you start this path you define here without a leading slash. So if you wanna define something for your root page, your main page, like here, localhost 1200 slash nothing, there is like an invisible slash here, then you just have an empty path here. The second part then is the component. That defines which component you wanna render. And that could be our person's component there. And if you're referencing it here, you need to import it as well. So let's import person's component from this person's folder and there the person's component file. Now that's one path, but I wanna have another path here too. So let's add a second object to the routes array. And that is, let's say, to be found under input. So technically that would be localhost 4200 slash input. This route here would then reach, or this path would then reach this route. And there I wanna render another component, the person input component. So again, we need to add our import up here, person input component from dot slash persons person input component, like this. These are the routes we have, but of course, just defining a constant like this, which we never use, doesn't help Angular. So in this ng module here, we actually now need to do something. We need to tell Angular about our routes. We do that by adding the imports key, where we can import our modules. And from the at Angular router package, I'll import the router module. And I imported that here too, router module. Now this module can take some configuration and it does so with a special method it gives us, the for root method, where we can define the root, so the main routes of our application. And we pass in an array of routes, which is exactly what I have up here. So we pass in routes there. Now we could have done that directly in the app module and it wouldn't have been wrong, but it's a nice way of outsourcing this into a separate file to keep the app module clean. But to use these routes in our app module, which is the first entry point of our app, we now need to export something by adding an exports array here, and we export the router module. But this now is the configured router module, you could say. So it's the router module with our root routes registered. Now with that, 
And you can ignore that error which it's showing here. That's uh, a bug in the IDE. Now with that, we can import our app routing module in the app module. We can add it here to the imports array, the app routing module. And of course, since we want to use it here, we have to add an import statement up there. And by the way, the import statements here are TypeScript features. They are not to be mistaken with the imports array here, which is an Angular feature. So here I import from app-routing, uh, not component, but module. So this module will be created here. With that, the routes are registered. To render the content of our routes, we now need to tell Angular where to render them. And for that, I'll get rid of my components in the app component HTML file, and I'll add a new one, the router outlet element. That is a element, a component, to be precise, a directive, Angular ships with, which is available thanks to us using router module. If I now save that, you will see that as the page reloads, hmm, we don't see anything, right? Well, we also have no error and we actually only don't see anything because our passing data around logic doesn't work anymore. If in the developer tools, we have a look at the elements tab, we can see that we do have the router outlet and next to it, Angular did indeed add the right component, the person's component, but our list is empty because we have no data in there because you have to remember that we got our persons through property binding. But now that we're using routing, this doesn't work anymore because we're not directly using our component tag anymore. And hence we can't use the square brackets. We can't add them here on the router outlet because that will load multiple routes actually, not just at one component all the time. So how can we now still pass data around? Well, that is something we can solve with services the other major feature you gotta know when working with Angular.